Hey there, and welcome to another Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host. Sleeping at night is supposed to be peaceful, a time when you close your eyes and gently drift off into dreamland. But as horror film directors keep reminding us, that nocturnal journey can take a dark turn. One in 20 people experience a nightmare at least once a week, a statistic that is more than a bit scary. So why do bad dreams lurk in our subconscious? I'm going to wander that trail of terror today with psychologist and sleep medicine specialist Elena Tiani. Dr. Tiani is one of the many experts at Cleveland Clinic who join our weekly podcast to explain how our minds and bodies work. Now let's enter the world of nightmares and see if there's a safe way out. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Tiani. Uh, Thanks for pulling up a chair to chat today. Sure. Thanks so much for having me. Well, it seems like people have been trying to understand the cause of nightmares uh, throughout time. Uh, And there have been some pretty spooky and colorful explanations, too, uh, including that it was caused by uh, demons sitting on our chests. Yeah, that sounds a little bit more like maybe something we call sleep paralysis which can involve a nightmare, um, but certainly can have some uh, kind of spooky underlying uh, pieces to it. Well, everyone wants to think there's something something really creepy going on, but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of get to the bottom of it here because I, I'm assuming uh, that nightmares are not brought on uh, by demons hanging out in our bed. So uh, <laughs> um, so let, let's dig a little deeper into the potential causes. Um, I guess starting with, with stress, Um, Can can we really drag the problems of the day uh, into our sleep? Absolutely. Um, You know, stress, anxiety, whether that's due to um, things you have going on in your life that represent more of a stressor or a challenge, things like um, a move, a a change in a job or loss of a loved one, things like that. Um, All of these kind of unresolved problems that we experience during the day can definitely kind of cross over into our uh, nightmare activity. Absolutely. So, I mean, that stress itself, can can it really just, I mean, cause those real, I mean, just absolutely terrifying nightmares um, that, that wake you up in the middle of the night? Yeah, I mean, we don't exactly know, you know, as to the complete purpose of our dreams, but we do know that at least some people kind of hypothesize that it's really kind of our brain trying to play out or or deal with some of these unresolved things that may cause us stress and anxiety during the daytime, um, oftentimes those things are kind of fodder for our nightmares. Um, mm-hmm. Let me ask you this too, because this comes up a lot. If you're up at night watching a, a horror flick, it, it, it does seem like you, you often will get nightmares after that. Is that just kind of like a, a byproduct of some self-inflicted cinematic stress? It can be um yeah you might find yourself kind of walking more carefully through your home at night after watching a scary movie or maybe checking behind doors um and really anything that kind of activates the nervous system in that way or or it's scary um can you know things like uh movies but it could also be things like watching um the news which can be stressful or having maybe difficult or stressful conversations close to bedtime Um, All of those things can kind of set the stage for maybe more um, dreams that that could be nightmare related afterward. So like if you just if there's something really intense going on that that you either watch or read or or kind of see, uh, it sounds like that can trigger those nightmares um, at night. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I think it's probably for most people um, just the case that, you know, they may have a random nightmare here or there um, and maybe more susceptible to them after dealing with stress or watching a scary movie. But um, there's often other causes. So um, when we think of stress, we can also think of um, mental health concerns, for example, like post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, which we may discuss. And so that is um, another major reason why individuals may experience nightmares. Well, yeah, let's talk about that a little more, because I did see where that is a, a pretty a common thing. If you if you have uh, PTSD, um, that that nightmares can can kind of come along with that. What what's happening there? Yeah. So PTSD um, is typically diagnosed after somebody has experienced a significant uh, trauma or stressor such that their life or well-being was threatened or they saw someone else's life. Oral being being threatened. Um, 
However, um, you know, we do kind of distinguish between a nightmare disorder and then nightmares due to PTSD. Um, and so nightmares are one of the main symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, oftentimes individuals will describe having nightmares that are recurrent, um, frequent, maybe very vivid, um, disturbing dreams. And usually they are related to the stressful experience um, that they encountered. A couple of times in our conversation here, you've kind of made a, a di- made sure to point out the difference between nightmares and nightmare disorder. Um, can you kind of explain uh, why those are two different things and, and kind of what sets them apart? Yeah. Um, so nightmares, you know, most people have an occasional nightmare here or there, and it's um, usually not something to worry about. But nightmare disorder is when those dreams are more consistent and recurrent, very distressing. Um, there's actually um, criteria. So in the DSM-5, um, which is what we use to diagnose certain mental health uh, disorders, there's certain criteria to where the dreams must be very dysphoric, very distressing. Um, upon awakening from the dream, the person typically is very alert um, or maybe in more of a um, distressed state. And typically it has to cause some type of problem during the daytime to where it can impair them and their social functioning, um, occupational functioning or other areas, or just cause pretty significant um, distress. And we also roll out you know, if they're being caused maybe by things like medications, um, sub- substances or other medical or mental health disorders. Um, those are typically the criteria that we look at. So, so nightmare disorders are kind of like that, that next level where it's, it's, it's kind of tied in w- w- with something else um, as opposed to just, I guess, your, your run of the mill nightmare, which kind of hits all of us every once in a while. And it's just kind of our, our mind, um, I guess, having a little bit of fun with us at night. <laughs> Yeah, these are a little bit more frequent than that. There's actually not a frequency um, criterion that's set for the disorder, but um, typically um, it's suggested that it may be a mild nightmare disorder, could be less than one episode a week on average. Uh, Moderate would be maybe one or more episodes a week, and then um, severe would be closer to like nightly nightmare episodes. Okay. Now, when we talk about your kind of just the nightmare that pops up every once in a while, um, I, I thought I had read where, where late night snacks um, or even like a, a cocktail uh, may kind of be fuel for that. There's been some individuals that, that will say maybe having um, caffeine or things that are more stimulating at nighttime might be related. Um, you know, perhaps having alcohol with alcohol and sleep. Um, we do know that alcohol tends to help uh, help you to fall asleep because it's a depressant, um, but it can kind of wreak havoc on your sleep throughout the night by actually causing more um, disruption and some changes in your sleep architecture. Um, but certainly any type of medication and various substances can um, be linked to nightmares. Um, what about sleep deprivation? I, I thought I had also, I also saw where if you're just, if you're not getting enough sleep and you're just, you're, you're that overtired, it seems like your mind is a little apt to to kind of crank up uh, the nightmares too. Yeah, we do know that um, sleep deprivation or other sleep uh, problems such as having more of an irregular sleep schedule can be linked with um, a higher likelihood of having nightmares. Um, untreated obstructive sleep apnea, which is another common sleep disorder where um, you're not essentially getting enough oxygen, there's breathing disturbance at night, um, is also strongly linked with a uh, prevalence of nightmares. Well, I guess if, if you, you were, you're going to start, stop breathing, that, that would be something, <laughs> something to set off a nightmare. Sure, sure. Yeah. And it can be that, um, with the repeated arousals that we see from that sleep disorder, that's really what the link is there between, um, the, the sleep apnea and the, and the nightmare, um, nightmare disorder. Yeah. Now, now we've, we've kind of covered a lot of ground here. We're talking about nightmares and, and nightmare disorders. Um, so w- when you start looking at the connection between the, kind of these, these events and mental health conditions, um, when does it become an issue where you really need to seek out uh, kind of a, a medical professional and, and talk to them about it? Yeah, I think I'd probably go back to more of that um, nightmare disorder criteria. So typically when you're having them frequently, they're recurrent, 
and they're causing some type of problem for you, um, whether that's just a sleep disturbance or whether that's causing problems during the daytime as far as the distress of the nightmare. Um, and certainly, you know, if there's any um, thought that there may be a diagnosis of PTSD or a significant history of trauma, um, we do know that about estimates are between anywhere from 70 to 90 percent um, of people with post-traumatic stress disorder will experience frequent and persistent nightmares. Um, and those can remain, um, you know, in the long term. And so that's definitely probably a time to to look at, you know, the effects the nightmares are having on your quality of life um, and, and probably mention them either to, um, you know, your family doctor um, or a sleep physician. That is a staggeringly high number when you talk 70 to 90 percent. Um, when you kind of are in that at that spot, is that something then where you treat uh, the, the the PTSD and the trauma and kind of get the counseling on that end and it takes care of uh, the nightmare disorder? Or is there something that's specifically done uh, on the sleep side? So um, it's always recommended, of course, to you know connect with a mental health provider who can do a good job of helping an individual to um, process and kind of um, manage and work through the, the symptoms of PTSD and the trauma experience. In addition to that, um, there is a treatment that's offered specifically for nightmares. Um, so it was actually developed at the VA hospitals um, for veterans who were experiencing uh, PTSD-related nightmares. And that uh, treatment is called image rehearsal therapy, um, or we call it IRT for short. Um, and so that therapy really kind of involves um, taking a look at some of the common themes in the nightmares that the person is experiencing. And it actually involves taking um, almost a narrative of the dream, getting a good sense of, um, you know, the things that the patient is experiencing in the dream as far as sights, sounds, smells, um, et cetera, writing that out with them. And then working to do something called re-scripting uh, the dream narrative. That's fascinating. So ba basically, you kind of change that that nightmare, and, and you just—I mean—is it putting a happy ending on it? Is it just changing the whole story around, or, or what? What? What do you? What do you do with that? Yeah, we first like to get patients started practicing something called positive guided imagery, uh, where we actually have them practice imagining pleasant scenes. So maybe imagining the beach, and you know what the sounds of the waves would be like or what the sand feels like on your toes. Um, and then we would work on um, that dream narrative that I described where we write out the dream, not necessarily the most distressing dream, um, but a dream that has caused you know some distress, uh, working through that script and then looking at, is there a place in the dream where we can make a shift? Um, and it can really be as, creative as you want it to be. So maybe you're having a dream that you are um, falling out of an airplane. And um, at the end of the dream, you hit the ground and you wake up. Maybe instead, we can rewrite that to say, suddenly, I recognize that I have on a backpack and the backpack has this large parachute and I pull the cord um, and I, you know, glide down to the ground safely. Um, and so it, it changes the dream to where there can be some more autonomy and sort of gives your brain an alternative route for the dream to go. And that is amazing that you can kind of work on that, you know, during, during the day and that it'll just seep into that, that overnight dreaming that you have. It's really the repetition. And I think the rehearsal and review of these dream narratives. So we'll have patients write them out, come up with alternative endings review them and even kind of go over them prior to bedtime because we know some of those uh, some of those rewrites uh, reviewing them before bedtime can be helpful to kind of remind the brain that when I recognize I am in this situation, you know there is an alternative ending or an alternative option here that could be you know it could be happy or it could just be less distressing than the original nightmare. Now, now, you would mention that as something that's done uh, a lot with people um, dealing with like PTSD and some of those, those trauma um, situations. Um, if you're just, I guess, normal, everyday person kind of having some nightmares, um, you know, you really you don't want them unless you're a horror writer, I guess. Um, do you have any tips that that 
I guess we could all kind of use to prevent a bad dream from ruining a good night's sleep? Um, I do think being mindful of maybe some of the um, media and, and things that you're taking in during um, the nighttime and maybe within the last few hours before bedtime. Um, that's true for probably both adults and kiddos that media exposure, the things that we might read or the videos we might watch, um, just being mindful of the content because anything stressful or overwhelming um, could set us up to potentially, um, they may not cause nightmares, but may heighten the risk um, that those themes or feelings could be present in our dreams. Um, I think also for, you know, just the average person to have a good sense of their um, their ability to manage their day-to-day -day stressors. And if they have, you know, stressors that are chronic or unresolved, um, those types of themes, you know, may pop up as distressing nightmares in their dreams. So trying to be mindful of stress management um, and making sure to have like a good wind down routine before bedtime that's relaxing, calming, um, to kind of promote um, a more pleasant end to the day. Yeah, we've talked about that on the podcast before, too, the, the power of kind of like meditation before bed or, or yoga. I take it that would kind of help um, put your mind in a, in a better spot uh, before you go to sleep. Yeah, we know that bedtime in general, um, you know, is a great time for our minds to start having worrisome thoughts. It's quiet. It's dark. There's not a whole lot of distraction going on. So really anything that we can give our brain to help it um, relax and and to really be um, a little more mindful is is a positive thing. So things like um, guided imagery can be really helpful where um, individuals might listen to an audio recording where there is a guide walking them through the meditation. Um, a lot of individuals may find that helpful because it's kind of giving their brain um, a constructive direction to go in. How important is to just establishing a, a solid sleep schedule? I know so many people, uh, you just, you're all over the place during the day and you don't have that firm bedtime and, um, you know, to, to just kind of guide things. If you can get that set, will that also help get rid of some of these bad dreams? It could help. Um, again, the irregularity in the sleep schedule may not necessarily be the sole cause of nightmares, but it certainly could play a role. Um, and so anything we could do to support good sleep health does, you know, support um, the reduction of nightmares. Um, but yeah, having a consistent sleep schedule with the most important piece really being having a consistent wake time and ultimately just going to bed when your body feels sleepy. Um, is there Are there any different tips you would have for adults versus kids? Um, as far as adults, I think that we probably go through most of the day feeling a little bit uh, maybe stressed, overwhelmed. We have a lot of things to do. And so we kind of run up right until bedtime and then expect to just kind of hit the pillow and fall right asleep. Um, and that might not be so realistic. So giving yourself time, like I said, with the wind down routine as a buffer zone between the daytime and nighttime can help to promote um, more relaxation. Um, and for kids, I think probably, again, the media exposure component, watching what kinds of, you know, shows or games that they're involved with prior to bedtime, um, but also having open conversations with them about nightmares and kind of um, explaining to them that, you know, um, the nature of nightmares and and kind of having an open space to discuss that um, between the, the caregiver um, and, and the child is important. Um, providing some of that reassurance to them that, you know, this, this was just a dream. Well, that is some fabulous advice and it should lead to some uh, hopefully happier dreaming for, for everyone here tonight, Dr. Tiani. Uh, but before we say goodbye or, or I guess even good night, uh, depending on when you're watching this, uh, do you have anything else to add about nightmares? Yeah, I think, you know, um, of course it is common to have nightmares um, a little more frequently when we're going through a stressful time. Typically, those should resolve once the stressor resolves, but if it's something more persistent or that continues on for you know a number of weeks or months, um, that would be a great time to bring it up to one of your providers. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Dr. Tiani, and, uh, and sharing uh, all this information. Thank you so much for having me. Nightmares are common and just part of being human. 
A few healthy changes to your sleep routine may help keep them away. But if bad dreams turn every night into a frightful event, talk to your healthcare provider to help find a solution. If you liked what you heard today, please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment to share your thoughts. Till next time, be well.